truth about Mary Curie Redemptrix is something that is revealed by Jesus, nurtured in the apostolic church, continues to grow during the patristic period, during the fathers of the church, and continues well and beautifully into the Middle Ages. Welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And we're going through the history, in fact, the historical high points of the truth of Mary as co-redemptrix. We're going through an outline which is presented in this book called With Jesus, The Story of Mary Co-Redemptrix. This book is available from Queenship Publications uh, for $3 in an effort to make it available to anyone who really wants to examine the historical background of this truth about our Blessed Virgin in her unique relationship in salvation, always with and under Jesus Christ, the Lord and Redeemer of all. We've talked about Mary in Scripture in our series, and we've also discussed Mary in the early church, the concept of Our Lady as the New Eve, even the liturgies that speak about Mary as the Liberatrix, the Salvatrix, even the Eastern Akathist hymn, who calls Mary the Redemption. Uh, these are strong terms which are principally focusing Our Lady's role in terms of giving birth to Jesus. Uh, and indeed, she is co-redemptrix insofar as she uniquely gives birth to Jesus, giving Jesus the instrument of his redemption, which is his body. But as the church ponders this and prays this, as the mystics receive information about this, as the doctors of the church, uh, in their wisdom, articulate and preach about this, we now move in the Middle Ages to a deeper understanding of Mary's participation in the suffering of Jesus at Calvary. So remember, the role of Mary as co-redemptrix means that Mary uniquely participates, uniquely cooperates with Jesus in the work of salvation. That's already satisfied, that, that definition, if you will, of co-redemptrix is satisfied with Mary at the Annunciation, but it does not stop there. And that's why we know scripturally in the prophecy of Simeon, he says, and a sword shall pierce your own soul too. That's the future. That's what's going to happen at Calvary. Well, as this truth, again, is, is brought to greater fruition in the history of the church, we find that by the 10th century, we have uh, writers, uh, preachers, and also liturgical prayers that are identifying the fact that Mary is indeed the co-partner of salvation with Jesus at the cross. Not just in giving birth to Jesus, but her ongoing suffering with Jesus, which is climaxed at the cross. I'm going to look at a few historical high points during this Middle Age period. First of all, we go to John the Geometer. John the Geometer is a 10th century Byzantine monk, and he's really the first to fully convey that Mary is suffering with Jesus at the foot of the cross. Uh, I want to read to you the words of John the Geometer, and remember now, this is a thousand years ago, and see how clearly he understands that the heart of Mary is going to suffer with the heart of Jesus uh, in this work of redemption, because that's their mission. That's their mission before the Father, Jesus the Redeemer and Mary the Co-Redemptrix in this role. These are the words of John the Geometer. He says, and I quote, The virgin, after giving birth to her son, was never separated from him in his activity, his dispositions, his will. When he went away, she went with him. When he worked miracles, it was as if she worked them with him sharing his glory and rejoicing with him. When he was betrayed, arrested, judged, when he suffered, not only was she everywhere present beside him and even realized especially then his presence, but she even suffered with him. Terribly sundered, she would have wished a thousand times to suffer the evils she saw her son suffering. In a real sense, isn't John the Geometer conveying what every mother knows? And that is, if my child is suffering, if my son is in the throes of a torture, of course I'm going to be suffering with him. I'm not simply going to say, well, I gave you birth and now it's up to you. Uh, of course, whenever a child suffers, 
in a special way, the heart of the mother shares in that suffering. And that's what John the Geometer is flushing out in the 10th century. It's also interesting in the 10th century that we have the first use of the term redemptrix. Now, once again, let's keep in mind these trix terms. Uh, the Latin suffix simply refers to a female, a feminine uh, reference to whomever the object is referring to. So, to call Mary the redemptrix means a woman who is participating, sharing in this redemptive work. Some might say, well, redemptrix, that's too strong. Uh, that's making clear that she's on a level with, of equality with Jesus. Uh, well, this is not the case. It's not the case theologically, and it's not the case historically. In fact, in a French hymnal in the 10th century, uh, the expression, holy redemptrix, pray for us, is what appears. Now, it's significant that it's not holy redemptrix, have mercy on us, as would be appropriate to Jesus, who alone can be the source of mercy. Rather, it's asking Mary, as the redemptrix, to pray for us. And this is the same treatment as we see Mary in the Eastern liturgical hymn, the Akas hymn uh, in the 5th to 6th century, referring to Mary as the redemption. Uh, she's the redemption insofar she participates with Jesus, never in that replacement. So, at this 10th century, you have both the term redemptrix and you have the doctrine of Mary's suffering with Jesus at the foot of the cross throughout his life. We're going to see in his next four to five hundred years that both redemptrix is used uh, and the title, uh, which is bespeaking her unique suffering. And by the 14th century, we're going to see the introduction of the co redemptrix. And that's going to be a process, uh, a process that is helped by the theology of the time. So I want to identify two great theologians at the time that make a huge step forward for Our Lady's role as the co-redemptrix. First of all, St. Bernard of Clairvaux. St. Bernard of Clairvaux dies in 1153. His great contribution is twofold. Bernard is the first to talk about Mary's cum passio, or we would say compassion. The compassion of Mary with Jesus at Calvary. Compassio literally means with suffering, to suffer with. So Bernard is referring to Mary's compassion as well as articulating that Mary offers her divine son as a victim to the Father. So you have Mary's suffering with Jesus and you have Mary's uh, offering of Jesus in obedience to the Father. And that also has a reference which leads us to Calvary. It's not just at the Annunciation, but it's Mary's compassion with Jesus in the redemption of the world. Now, Bernard has a famous student called Arnold of Chartres, also in the same basic time period. Arnold dies in uh, the 1160s. Arnold takes the teachings of his master one step further and uses co-terms. He says that Mary co-suffers with Jesus. Mary co-dies with Jesus in her heart. Mary is co-crucified with Jesus spiritually. And you can see when John Paul II in the 20th century says that Mary is spiritually crucified with her crucified son, that is a truth that is identified by Arnold of Chartres back in the 12th century. That Mary uniquely suffers with Jesus at Calvary, and that that suffering, as we're going to see, contributes to the redemption of the world, something that John Paul II will again make clear reference to in the 20th century. So, in this period, we have, indeed, Mary is the redemptrix because of her unique participation with Jesus. We have that Mary uniquely shares in this suffering with Jesus at Calvary, and then you have these co-terms this, as we're going to see, is going to lead us to the breakthrough of the term co-redemptrix in the 14th century and a term that was defended by the greatest theologian at the Council of Trent, Alphonsus Salmeron, in the 16th century. Ongoing development, same truth, more understanding, greater fruits for the people of God. And who is Mary the co-redemptrix? Thank you and God bless you.